My dear sister Effie, uh, founder of Impactor, my dear sister watching us here today, it's my pleasure to address you today in this very important uh, meeting for Ignite Her, Empowering Women for Success. As we all know that the real power is the potency, the capacity to act and to implement. So if we're talking about women empowerment, it's really about how to empower our women in order to make sure that they realize their dreams, they have their objectives, and we as business organization, what can we do to empower women? Empower of women, I call it the triad of empowerment, which really is based on three pillars. First pillar is about personal empowerment programs. How can we empower the women to have self-confidence, self-esteem, to train her, to build her capacity, to make sure that we are really giving her the necessary tools to empower her personality, to lead her enterprise or career. The second pillar is about policy advocacy. What is the policy that we really need in order to empower the women? And one of the policies we are really pushing for it as Africa Business Council or even as African Alliance for Women Empowerment and Business Women Organization is to have at least 40% of all government procurement goes to African private sector, including SMEs, women, and Jews. So if we have 30, at least 30% 30 of all government procurement goes to SMEs, women, and Jews, that will be very important to leverage and upscale our women owners of SMEs. And whatever is present on the African continent, we should not bring it from outside the African continent. Again, financial inclusion is a very important tool towards empowering our women economically. Women on board, we really need to push for our women to be on the executive boards and not only on the middle salary position. Another thing is that we need the enabling environment and the conducive environment for our women to be really performing their businesses and pursuing their careers. The third pillar is really about what I call the product development. If a woman is a trader or she's in business or she is giving even a service, how can we have her product which be branded, packaged, designed, standardized, to have a made in Africa product which is powerful, competitive, value added, branded, standardized, packaged of high quality, and to really have the intellectual property for women that is already patent and registered. Mm -hmm. So with these three pillars, are we, and this third pillar could be done through establishment of business incubators, business development centers, accelerators, technology hubs. It's very important to understand that in order to realize the agenda, 2060 development agenda, which is a prosperous, peaceful, integrated Africa, driven by the citizens of Africa, and we are the citizens of Africa, we need to see how all of us come together with those types of empowerment. It's not only a one uh, stakeholder, but it's a multi-stakeholder. So it's the government, it is the the society organization, the private sector, the regional organizations, international organizations, the UN agencies, all of the stakeholders are working really to empower women. So the Africa Business Council, which is established as line of the, uh, uh, in the Heads of State Decision Summit to be the private sector arm of the African Union, is including all our APIC and continental and regional private sector. And our founding vision is competitive, borderless, innovative Africa for trade, investment, and industrialization. Because if we want to realize the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, which is the flagship program of our continent now, 
with 1.3 billion people as a single market, we need to empower our women to realize the ACFT. And to realize the ACFT, it's not really about trading among ourselves by bringing containers from outside the continent, but it is empowering ourselves to see how we can trade among ourselves with a Made in Africa product, which is produced by our women on the continent. And this is a real success. How to ignite her, how to really motivate her, how to incentivize her, how can we raise her voice? How can we build her capacity? It is very important to see how we can give her all the tools because we as women of the continent are really very powerful, but we need the tools, we need the enabling environment, we need the training, we need the coaching, the mentorship, the business networks, which is very important. So business networks is a huge importance for all of us to have business linkages, to have our contacts, to see how we can have our uh, products that have access to market and to international market. Digitalization is a huge cornerstone for Ignite Her and empowering her. We are in the digital era. So e-commerce, digital economy, and empowering our women through digitalization is also, again, of a huge importance. So the, re the advocacy pillars of any economic empowerment of women is really depending on entrepreneurship, is depending on supporting our SMEs and women entrepreneurs, supporting STEM education, which is science, technology, engineering, mathematics, supporting the women access to markets and international markets, access to finance and access to credit. And to do all this, it's not a thing that one should. It is actually a multi-stakeholder approach. And as a businesswoman, a business entrepreneur who started my company when I was a third year medical school, which is of huge importance to know that I didn't know that I was an entrepreneur at that time. I was a medical student, but it was an idea that came to my mind to see how I start my company. And I went through many, many, many steps. And that's why in now when I'm talking about economic empowerment of women, I'm talking out of experience. How did I start as an entrepreneur? How my company now, which is in healthcare management, I'm also a professor of, pedi of pediatrics. How did I really do it? It's really about five P's. I call it the recipe of success. The first P is passion. You have to be very passionate about your work. The second P is really about to be pioneer, pioneer in what you are doing. The third P is planning. The fourth is about performance. And the fifth is about persistence and perseverance. This is the recipe of success. If we really want to empower her, we really need to work together and to see how they lobby the government to give the right legislation. So we empower her to be self confident, self esteem. We advocate with the governments and policymakers for the laws and the infrastructure of legislation for empowering her. And the third P, as I mentioned, is about what product or what services you are offering to the society and how do we really build her career and how she can perform and be on the top executive level. So my dear sisters, I'm so happy to be with you today. I am now in transit. <laughs> and so I am happy to really talk to you and give this message. And as I always say, it is we have all to work together for the economic empowerment of women. Why? Because economic empowerment of women give you financial independence. And my logo is financial independence give you the power of choice and voice. That's why it's of crucial importance to have economic empowerment of women. And as I always say, 
one tree will not make a forest. And as our African proverb say, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if we want to go far, all of us, we go together. My very much happy to be with you. Thank you very much, my sister Effie, and thank you for all of you. My very dear sister.